second verse. Jesus, keep me near the cross. Let a precious fountain free to all a healing stream. Close from Calvary's mountain. for this time of communion. Thank you for your love and mercy towards us who are destined to hell for eternal punishment. Holy Spirit, let this time be the opportunity for us to think about who we were and what you've done for us so far. Especially let us think about the depth of the love of Christ and his sacrifice to redeem us on the cross. Lord Jesus, we are here right now to remember your body which was torn and your blood which was shed on the cross to redeem us because we want to obey your commandments because we love you because you loved us first bless and anoint this time of communion and give us discernment and let us be more sensitive to our sins pour out the spirit of repentance upon our hearts right now we pray all this in your mighty name amen now let's proclaim let's read 1 Corinthians 11, 27 through 29, together, 3, 2, 1. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drink this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Amen. Now let's close our eyes. Let's close our eyes and examine our hearts. Let's invite the Holy Spirit and let's, let's repent before we eat up the bread and drink up the cup. Jesus, we know and believe that you forgive us faithfully according to your promise. Thank you for purifying us before we eat up the bread and drink up the cup. In your name we pray. Amen. Now let's read 1 Corinthians 11, 23 and 24 together. 3, 2, 1. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed to bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Church, this is the body of Jesus Christ, which was broken for us. Let's remember his body eating this bread.
let's read 1 Corinthians 11, 25, 3 to 1. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Church, this is the blood of Jesus Christ which was shed for us to redeem us. Let's drink it and let's remember his blood. Jesus came me near the cross, third and fourth verse together. Near the cross. Near the cross, O Lamb of God, bring his sins before me. Help me walk from day to day. Shadows o First off, those of you who have a Wi-Fi on, can you please turn it off? Because the connection is bad. The, the, it's, it's the, the, the YouTube recording is, is, there's a glitch. So if you have a Wi-Fi, can you please turn it off, please? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Hold on a minute. Amen. Praise Jesus. Amen? Amen. Praise Jesus. Amen. Now we're back into our First Peter series, okay? We took a break last week because it was a resurrection Sunday, right? And now we're back at it again. First Peter chapter 11. I'm sorry. <laughs> session 11. 11th session. I'm sorry. 11th session. All right? All right, guys, it's my, it's my second time preaching today, all right? I, I, in the morning, there was a Korean service. I preach in Korean. I give it all I got in the, in the morning. I'm drained right now. It's, it's like it's every Sunday, all right? So, so when I get up here, like my, my brain is kind of frozen, all right? But it's okay, you know, because we have such a wonderful people like yourselves, right? We feel the Holy Spirit, right? So, like, you guys are pulling me. So, like, I, I get encouraged by you, Amen. So I come up here drained, but I get energy from you guys, amen? Because you guys all feel the Holy Ghost, amen? Praise God, all right. 
So today is our, is our 11th session on this wonderful book, 11th session on this wonderful book of 1 Peter, and we're still looking at, we're still looking at 1 Peter chapter 18 through verse 21, okay? All right, let's all read together. One, two, three. Amen. So last session, I mentioned the word redemption is the most important word in the whole Bible. Remember that, right? Because the word redemption speaks of God's saving work. And to be precise, the word redeem means that it is to buy back someone from bondage. That's what redeem means, okay? It means to buy back with a price. And sometimes the price is very, very high. Okay, have you guys heard of this phrase called King's Ransom? When you watch like in medieval time movies, right, the Dark Ages, you hear the phrase King's Ransom, right? Right? I love, used to, I used to love watching those movies. But um, <clears throat> King's Ransom is when the king would get captured, he would get captured, and the enemy requires, requires a, a, a price for his, for his freedom, Right? And they demand a high price. It's a real high price. And that price is, is what you call ransom. Amen? And it's, it's, to, it's, to, it's a price to redeem someone from bondage. It's what you call ransom. Amen? And there's an interesting story, all right? It came out of a medieval, dark age story, right? It's a true story where the king was captured and they, the enemy required the queen's right hand. Right hand. So the story goes, the queen actually cut off her hand and gave it up for the king, right? It's a true story, right? I mean, would you guys do that for your husband? Would you do that for your husband? <laughs> would my wife do that for me? Huh? <laughs> I hope so, <laughs> right? Anyways, it's a, it's a high price for redemption, Amen. But Peter says in our passage that there's a higher price, infinitely higher price, and that is the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Precious blood, without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish. And Jesus gave that blood as ransom for many. Amen? That is why in, our, in our Mark 10, 45, Jesus says, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as ransom for many. Amen? And I think we talked about this last session, didn't we? Right? The word ransom, right? Which is the price of our redemption. And we also talked about what were we redeemed from. Amen? Right? We were redeemed from what? Bondage of sin and the consequences of sin, which is what? Eternal punishment of hell. So we've been redeemed from sin and the consequences of sin, which is what? Eternal punishment of hell. Amen? And it is this bondage of sin. It's a bondage of sin that drives us, and I want to even say it drags us to hell. Bondage of sin, it drags people to hell. Amen? Amen? Because the word bondage is identified as a slavery, as in we're in chains. Before you came to Christ, you were in chains, right? People out there who don't know Christ, they're in chains, right? As in they're dragged around in chains. They're slaves to sin, right? And the scripture clearly tells us that we are all born as a, all born as a sinner. As in we were all born as slaves to sin, as in bondage, Right? And last session, we talked about the bondage of lust. Remember that? Remember that? You don't remember that. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> How many of you guys really actually meditating through the sermon throughout the week? Huh? <laughs> How many of you actually take time to listen again on YouTube? You do? I know you do. <laughs> You're supposed to do that, okay? 
Anyways, last session we said, we looked at verse 14. Remember verse 14, where Peter says, as obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the form of lust as in, your, as in your ignorance, right? And we talked about this matter of lust in our last session, but we kind of bypassed the word ignorance, right? Remember? We kind of, so you don't remember that. When Peter Peter's saying, we live in lust because of our ignorance, that's what he's saying. Amen? Meaning, ignorance meaning we didn't know God, we didn't know Christ, therefore, we didn't even know what sin was. That's sort of ignorance, it's unbelief. That's the bondage. Unbelief is where the bondage of sin begins, unbelief. Amen? And we live in this bondage, we lived in this bondage to lust. We lived, is what Peter is saying, but now we are in Christ. So we do, not, we do not any longer live in the bondage, but we are, we are, because we are no longer a, a slaves to sin, but we are slaves to what? Righteousness. Are you living like that? Slaves to righteousness. And we talked about this in our last session, what it means to live not as slaves to sin, but to live as slaves of righteousness. We talked about this last session. Amen? Right? But we didn't go deep into the matter of ignorance. So today, as I promised in our last session, remember, remember I promised that, right? You do. Okay, all right. <laughs> We're going to go deep into this word called ignorance in verse 14. So get, get ready for some deep, deep thinking and some deep, deep conversation that I'm about to bring to the table, even though I'm the only one that's speaking. All right? But I'm going to bring it to you. All right? So get ready for some deep thinking, okay? All right? Because it might just change your whole paradigm today, okay? Now, the word ignorance that Peter is talking about is a characteristics of the unredeemed, unrenewed mind. It's unrenewed, unredeemed mind, amen? And, and as Jesus says in John 17, 25, he says this, O righteous Father, the world has not known you. Right there, okay? That is the key statement, which is that the world does not know God. Amen? And that right there is a bondage in and of itself because the biggest bondage, every bondage starts from unbelief. Amen. Every sin starts from unbelief. Amen? Amen? Because the bondage of sin starts from not knowing God, which is the unredeemed, unrenewed mind because they don't know who God is. You get that? Okay? Now, that is the clearest expression of ignorance, as in unrenewed. Mind are ignorant to the things of God. That is why Paul says in 1 Corinthians 2.14, he says this, But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolish to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Meaning, things of God is only discerned spiritually. But if you're not a spiritual man, if you're a man of the flesh, you don't understand the things of the Spirit. So no matter how much you read the Bible, maybe 10, 20 times, you still not understand it. You understand that it's like, it's, like a, it's like a good book. Oh, you could learn a lot from Proverbs. It's a good book. Like I said last week, Jesus is a good man. He lived a good life. It's a, oh, yeah, I want to be like him. That's, that's it right there. Because you don't have the Holy Spirit. Amen? Right? The unredeemed cannot understand because their mind is not renewed. It's not renewed. Amen? And Paul describes this unrenewed mind. He describes this unrenewed mind. In the clearest form, in Romans 1, 28 through 30, Romans 1, chapter 1, 28 through 31. Look at this. Look at this. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, right, God gave them over to the debased mind to do things which are not fitting. And what are they? Being filled with unrighteousness, sexual immorality, Wickedness, covetousness, malice, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil mindedness, they are whispers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors, inventors of evil things, disobedient, parent to their parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful. These are the nature that you carry inside, that I carry inside. But because we're also in Christ, we're no longer slaves to these natures anymore. Amen? 
Well, we were a slave to these natures. So this is what unrenewed mind is slave to. That is why Jesus says to the unrenewed mind in John 8, 44, look what he says to the unrenewed mind. He says, you are the father, you are, you are of your father, the devil. Man, whoever said Jesus is a nice guy, huh? You got to graduate from your Sunday school class, man. He was a gangster, man, for his father, right? He wasn't a nice little blonde-haired guy, meek and humble. He was meek to the weak. He was strong to the proud. That's the nature of God, amen? He says, you are your father, the devil, he says, right? In the desire of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from, from, from his own resource, for he is a liar and a father of it. So, everyone who is not in Christ, unredeemed, unrenewed mind, they are the children of the devil. Amen. So the, there's no middle ground here, man. You're either of the devil, you're of Christ. That's it. Don't, don't matter if you're some Catholic nun, priest, some, it doesn't matter if you're Gandhi. No matter what you are, whether you're a gangster or you're, whether you're the nicest person in the world, if you're not in Christ, you are of the devil. This just goes against the grain. It goes against the current of what? Humanism. Humanism, 666 is humanism. And the truth breaks every humanism. Amen. Amen? Amen? So the father of the unredeemed is the devil himself. And Paul calls this sons of disobedience in Ephesians 2.2. 2. Look at this. In which you once walk according to the course of this world. He's talking to the, the church of Ephesus. He said, once you were like this, right? According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Amen? So Paul is basically he's saying, you and I were sons of disobedience before we came to Christ. So people out there who's non believe they're all sons of disobedience. They are the children of the devil himself. That's what Paul is saying right here. And that's what the Bible says. Amen? So you and I, before we came to Christ, we were all sons of disobedience. Amen? And that is why, again, Jesus says in John 8, 44, we, I read it again for you. He said, you were the, your father is a devil, right? To the unredeemed, he was a murderer from the beginning. He, he, why? Because he, he's, a, he's a father of all, of all lies. Because why? He doesn't stand in the truth. There's no truth in him. He's all lies, all deception, right? It's all deception, right? Right? So over here, he's, he's saying to the unredeemed, the reason why you don't understand my words is because you are ignorant to the knowledge of God. You try to speak God's word to the, to the people out there un, unredeemed, they will not understand you unless the Holy Spirit intervenes. Amen? Amen. Right? So don't waste your time out there. You want to evangelize? You got to, you got to go with the Holy Spirit, man. Amen. Don't just go out there with your own zeal. Amen? Amen? No truth in him. He speaks lies. He speaks his, of his own resource, for he is a liar and father of it. He's a father of all lies. The devil is a father of all lies, and he takes your deceptive heart and he plays with you. Your heart is wicked. Because your heart is full of sin. Amen. It's always going up and down, up and down. And the devil, who's a father of all lies, feeds more lies into your wicked heart. Amen. And you just get tossed and fro by your own wicked heart. 
And I, here I am, I sit back and I, I see this, I see you guys go through the season. And I am so in agony. You hear me preach every Sunday. But you still go through this season. It's because of your unbelief. I tell you, it's your heart that's playing with you. Don't, don't listen to the lies of the heart, man. But some of you stay in this season for like weeks and months. It's like for a guy, you, 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 you're having a period right now. Straight up, that's it. You're a guy, you're having a period, you're a guy, man. I'm telling you, every three or four months, they go through the season. It's up and down, up and down. Why don't you stand in the truth, man? Huh? Your heart's deceitful. Don't trust your feelings. It's the li- lies to you. It's a liar. Beloved, I am fierce against lies and deception. Passion for the truth. Passion for the truth. There's no such thing as easygoing, laid back. The reason why I preach this way, yes, it's my personality too. But I am passionate for the truth to be, to be, to be exposed and the lives to be driven out, man. Because I see my children going through it all day, every day. Even I myself go through it too. Maybe for like a minute or two, right? No, literally a minute or two. Maybe, an, okay, something maybe an hour. Okay, okay, maybe, maybe, maybe something maybe all night. Yeah, maybe, maybe one night, yeah. Right? But I bounce right back in though. Amen. And I stand the truth. Bam! You know what I'm saying? Bam! Right? So he's saying, Jesus is saying to the unredeemed, you don't understand my words because you're ignorant to the knowledge of God. Why? Because you do not stand in the truth. Because their father is the devil the father of all lies, and therefore they're ignorant to the truth because they're filled with lies and deception which would take them straight into the pit of hell. That is why Paul also says to the church of Ephesus in Ephesians 5, 6, he says this, Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of the things, the wrath of God comes upon who? Mm -hmm, Man. Wrath of God comes upon the sons of this world, comes upon the unbelievers, unredeemed. The wrath of God comes upon them. And what is this wrath of God upon the sons of disobedience? It's the eternal punishment of hell to the unredeemed, unrenewed mind. That is the wrath of God. And beloved, this truth about the wrath of God goes, uh, goes straight against the lies and deception that says that God only hates sin. He does not hate the sinners. That is a lie from the pit of hell, man. That's a lie from the pit of hell. That sends you straight to hell. That's a lie. God only hates sin, but he doesn't hate the sinners. That's not even biblical. You heard that before, right? So many people Preachers say this on the pulpit. And do you know what happens when you say this to the unredeemed mind who are ignorant to knowledge of God? You know what happens? You know what happens? Do you know how the unredeemed mind perceives this when you say God hates sin but doesn't hate the sinners? Which connects to what? God's love is unconditional. It connects right into that. God's love is unconditional. It's like a two pair of phrases it's going at you. It's like a two, of, two torch of like deception fire right there. It's just going at you, man. Connects right into it. God does not hate sin. No, he does not hate sinners. He only hates the sin. Why? Because God's love is unconditional. That's a lie from the pit of hell. And many preachers, they say this, man. And do you know what happens when you say this phrase, God's love is unconditional to the unredeemed mind? You know, you know what happens to the people who are ignorant to the knowledge of God? You know what happens? 
these two phrases, God hates sin, but he doesn't hate the sinner because his love is, his love is unconditional. These two phrases is really deceptive and it misleads many people. Which is why there are so many unredeemed people in the church. Because these false gospel, false grace phrases that says God hates sin, but doesn't hate sinners because his love is unconditional. Wow, that makes sense, doesn't it? That makes perfect sense to deceive people, doesn't it? Right? Perfect sense, man. When you say God's love is unconditional, even as in the means of salvation. See, when you guys say this, I know what you guys mean. Those of you who have been sitting under my teaching for many years, some of you guys still say this. But I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't correct you, I don't rebuke you because I know what you're saying. You mean, you're saying that God's love is undeserved, right? 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 Yeah. But they say that then. Don't say unconditional. That opens a whole, another round for a whole misconceptions. If you use the word unconditional rather than undeserved, then that leaves big room for many misconceptions of his love and his grace because the unrenewed mind, to the unrenewed mind, because you say God's love is unconditional, they feel that they can be accepted by God even without repentance. And what does repentance mean? It means to turn away from your sins. Right? And keep turning away from your sins. Keep turning more and more as your repentance gets deeper and deeper. But there's another deception in the body of Christ who says this. You repent only once when you come to Christ, no more repenting. That's another lie from the pit of hell, man. Your repentance got to go deeper and deeper. And beloved, your repentance does not go deeper and deeper as you sin more and more. You get that? If you sin more and more, your heart cannot even repent because your heart is numb to it now. Those who repent deeper and deeper are the ones who are pursuing holiness, pursuing his righteousness as they pursue God more and more. How holy, how great. I already, I, I already explained this to you guys so many times, right? Isaiah, Job, Paul. Did I explain this to you guys? Right? Isaiah, he's a prophet of the nation. He encounters God in the temple. He says, I'm a man of unclean lips. This is Isaiah the prophet. And he encounters God. He says, I'm a man of unclean lips. Look at Job. Righteous man. God-fearing man. After he went through the trials and tribulation, he comes out, well, what did he say? Man, I actually heard about you. Now I see you now. Repentance goes deeper and deeper, beloved. Amen? Deception and lies, beloved, I'm telling you right now, you got to stand against those things. Some preachers, they don't even know what they're saying up here. They just say it to just to encourage you, but they don't know what kind of damage they're doing to, the, to your soul. They don't know because you know why? Love does not rejoice in lies. Love rejoices in the truth. Amen. Someone who is truly redeemed and renewed in the mind will pursue God, not in their own self-deceived way. Like the unredeemed, who are not even saved. But the redeemed person in the renewed mind will pursue after God. God's holiness and his righteousness. If you truly have been saved by, the, saved by grace through faith, and the Holy Spirit came and regenerates your heart, your mind, your mind is renewed by the grace of God through faith, then beloved, you have the indwelling presence of the holy, what's his name? What is his name? His name is Holy. Holy Spirit. When it dwells inside you, beloved, you're going to pursue holiness. You're going to pursue righteousness. Because the Holy Spirit, who is God, lives in you. Right?
And that's when, beloved, your repentance gets deeper and deeper. Amen? Anyways, if you have not experienced this repentance getting deeper and deeper, you won't understand it no matter how many times I tell you until you experience this in your intimacy with God. When you come into the, the chambers of his heart, right, the Holy Spirit takes you into the guided tour of the Holy He takes you into, this, into his heart. You, when you get kicked into that, into that place of intimacy, then you understand what this means. When you're out there sinning, you never understand what this means. Because repentance is far away from your vocabulary. And you still think you're saved. Why? Because you pray the sinner's prayer. Right? There are many in the church who are unredeemed, not saved, because of this deception that is going around the body of Christ that says, God loves me just the way I am. Right? And therefore, he accepts me just the way I am. Right? Why? Because God's love is unconditional. No. His love is not unconditional. His love is for the undeserved. Not unconditional. His love is for the undeserved. Undeserved, as in we don't deserve his love and his grace. Because there's nothing good in us to deserve his love and his grace. We are all wretched sinners, enemies of God, hostile towards God. But because God is love, because he himself is love, nothing in you actually pulled him to you. Nothing in you. He actually vomits when he looks at you without Christ. Without Christ. He vomits when he looks at you without Christ. Amen? Amen. But because he is love, he sent his son. Right? And he grants us repentance. It's got to be granted from God. He grants us repentance. To be forgiven, washed, cleansed from our sins by his precious blood. Amen? And through his resurrection, we have been transferred from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, kingdom of light as his precious child of God. Amen? Amen? Meaning, you're no longer a slave to sin, but you're slaves to righteousness now. But when you say that his love is unconditional, even in the means of salvation, what happens is people think, they won't, say, they won't straight up say this, but the deception slips right into your brain. You know what I call when you're, when you're watching a movie, you, you see a commercial of, of Coca-Cola just keep coming out, coming out, coming out, and without even noticing it, you start, you start binging for Coke. That's how the enemy works. He uses the false prophets who don't even know they're false prophets. They've just been used by the devil. Feeds lies into you, right? Without you even noticing it? Oh, come on, Paul. Man, you're too much, man. Relax. Really? See, that's why you're not up here. That's why you're not up here. That's why you're not up here. That's why, you don't, you, that's why you're not going to be judged by God as much as I get judged by God. Amen. See, I'm going I'm to I'm face 10 times judgment than you ever face. You know, the, you know what kind of life I live? You think it's some kind of joke here? You think I'm some kind of, some kind of, oh, some kind of yawning in coming out? Hey, do my thing. Huh? I take my jobs. This is, this is a calling mandate from the Lord to preach the whole truth but nothing but the truth. Amen. Whole counsel of God to you. But there are pastors who don't take their job seriously. God loves me unconditionally. He loves me just the way I am. That's why there is gay marriages in the church. Gay pastors. Because God loves me just the way I am, right? Because I was born gay. 
So I don't need to change because this is where I was born. And likewise, even those who are heterosexuals, likewise, you will say, I was born as a sinner. And it's, it's, you made me this way, so I don't have, even though I don't repent, if I, not, if, I, if I don't turn from my sins, it's okay because you sent your son because you were obligated to send your son. Therefore, I ain't got to repent. Beloved, this is what people think without, without even noticing it. That's why it's called deception. You don't even know it. You don't even know you're thinking this. You see, but I know. Because I have the Holy Spirit inside me, and he's very keen in the discernment. I'm a discerner of the heart. Because the Holy Spirit helps me discern the heart, man. That's why I preach like this. So we don't need to repent of our sins and pursue after holiness because God loves me just the way I am unconditionally. So people are misconceived this way. And that is why there's no genuine repentance. And beloved, without repentance, there's no salvation. There's no regeneration in the heart. There's no renewing in the mind without genuine repentance. And without genuine, keep going repentance. Amen? Because of this misconception of God's love, people stay unredeemed, unsaved in the church. Because people actually believe that God hates sin, but he loves a sinner, right? And that sounds very good, doesn't it? But it's very deceptive. I'll say it again. I am very fierce against the lies and deception why? Because that leads people straight into hell. And God does not want to see anyone that's going to hell. But fortunately, many are burning in hell right now because of deception. Even people in the church are going to hell because of deception, because of the false gospel, false grace message that's been preached all over the West and the East. Hell which is what? The wrath of God. Get this through your head right now. Hell is the wrath of God. It's his wrath. That's called hell. You just, read, you just saw it, right? Wrath. Amen? Ephesians 5, 6. Paul, I, I, I read it again. Paul says, let no one deceive you with empty words because of these things. The wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. The wrath of God Coming up on the sons of, the sons of disobedience. Sons of disobedience are the unredeemed, unrenewed mind who will not repent. The wrath of God comes upon those who will not repent. Because the arrogant, haughty eyes, prideful people don't repent. The wrath of God comes upon them. God hates the sinners. He hates the sinners, beloved. He's angry at the sinners who does not repent. This is the real gospel here. Whatever you learn from your celebrity preacher on YouTube, whatever, you know, what not, they're false prophets. God's wrath comes upon the unrepentant sinner who will not repent and trust God for their salvation. Why? Because they're prideful and arrogant. Pride wants something of his own efforts. I did this. I deserve this. I earned this. Not with God. No, you don't deserve nothing. His love is for the undeserved. Not for the ones who say, I deserve this. You don't qualify. Sorry. You're going straight to the pit of hell, man. No matter who you are, whether you're a Catholic priest, Gandhi, the most notorious gangster, or whatever you are, if you're not in Christ, you are sons of disobedience who is under the wrath of God if you don't repent and turn to Christ. Amen? And this truth of this wrath of God exposes the lies and deception that says God hates sin but not the sinners, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to expose this right now to you. So listen very carefully. Don't go to sleep. Open up your eyes and listen very carefully, all right? 
Now, you can, you, you, you can actually argue with me on this theologically if you want. Give me a call this week. I love those arguments, right? Right, John Mark? Right, he's my sharpener. He's, he's my pencil sharpener. He's my sharpener, okay? All right? I love it. Give me a call. It sharpens me up. It actually sharpens me up because I might be wrong too. You might bring something to the table that I, I, never, I never saw in the, in, in the scriptures. Like he does all, all day, every day, right? Even Steve too, you know, right? Right? So you want to argue with me? Call, call me, give me a call this week, all right? I get those phone calls all the time anyways. All right, listen. <laughs> listen. Listen. You cannot separate sin from sinners. Ever since Adam sinned, we were all born as a sinner. So for you to say God hates sin, not the sinners, that's wrong right there. Because sin doesn't become sin until you start sinning. Before Adam. Before Adam. I mean, after Adam. Okay? Again, you can argue with me on this, but I'll show you one scripture. Romans 5, 12 says this. Therefore, just as one man sin entered in the world and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all sinned. Now, how did all sin? How did we all sin? It's through Adam. That is why Paul says that we have all sinned and fall short of God's glory. We were born as a sinner. Amen? So sin cannot be separated from him. Sin, so sin cannot, cannot separate himself or herself from sin. Okay? Since Adam, sin and sinner cannot be separated. And therefore, this phrase, God hate sin, but not the sinners. That is not biblical in my knowledge of the word. And therefore, Bible clearly tells us that God is angry at the sinners who do not repent. I'll show you many, many scriptures now. Amen. Everything I say is backed up by the word of God. I don't, I don't come up here. I'm not a mother goose. I don't come up here and tell stories, man. Amen. I preach straight from the word. Amen? Amen. Look at this. Psalm 7, 12, 13. If a man does not repent, God, he will sharpen his sword. He, has, he bent his bow and made it ready. Against who? Sinner who does not repent. He also prepared himself a deadly weapon. He makes his arrow fiery shafts. Against who? Against the sinner who did not repent because of their arrogance and their pride. And therefore, look at Psalms 5.5. 5. The boastful, the proud shall not stand before your eyes. You what? Hate. Hate all who do iniquity. You want me to show you some more? I got plenty more, man. If you're not convinced, maybe you got to unlearn everything that you think you know about God. Maybe, maybe you need to unlearn things. Because many people come here and they unlearn things, right? Hosea 9.15. Oh, this, this, this will hit you hard. Check this out. All the evil at, pronounce that, Gilgal. Indeed, I came to hate them there. Because of the wickedness of the deeds. God says I hate them because of the wickedness, the sinners, unrepentant ones. I will drive them out of the house and I will love them no more. That means he once loved them. I will love them no more. And their princes are rebels. God is not Santa Claus. Amen? Amen. He is to be feared. Right? You know, I always tell you guys, man, you cannot pursue God with your favorite scriptures. Amen. <laughs> right? Do you do that, man? You got a rude awakening coming to you at the judgment seat. You thought you knew God with your favorite scriptures? God tell you, you didn't know who I am because I, I never knew you.
You need to search the whole scriptures for the whole counsel of God. Acts 20, 27, the whole counsel of God. So grow up from your immaturity Sunday school Christianity. Grow up. Grow up. Because if you pursue God only with your favorite scriptures, again, rude awakening coming to you when you stand before God. I'll show you some more. Amen. Psalm 6, 9, 24. Look at this. Put out your indignation, means your judgment on them. And may, and may your burning anger overtake them. It speaks of God's, some people say, oh, that's, that's, that's the Old Testament. Really? So I guess the Old Testament and New Testament gods are two, 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 different, two different gods? Do you see the way Christ talks to the Pharisees? You know that Christ's first public ministry was about hell? He was a hell-bound preacher, man. Beloved, read your Bible, please, before you talk that stuff to me. That shows how ignorant people are, man, in the world. Listen, God speaks of burning, he speaks of God's burning anger. And do you know what fuels the burning fire in hell right now? You know what fuels it? God's anger against sinners. I'll show you. Deuteronomy 32, 22. Look at this. For a, for a fire is kindled in my anger, and, I shall, it, sh and it shall burn to the lowest hell. The outside stop right there. That's it. What fuels the fire in hell is God's anger against unrepentant sinners. He's angry 24-7 at the unrepentant sinners. But he rejoices, he's happy with a repentant sinner who comes to Christ. See, I tell you every Sunday, our God is like a diamond. He has different facets. You got to study all his facets. That is why Jesus talks about hell from his first public ministry, which was what? The Sermon on the Mount. Matthew 5, I'll show you. Matthew 29, he says this. If your right eye calls you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you, for it is more profitable for you that once you member, your members perish, uh, that one of your members perish, than for your whole body to be cast into hell. Verse 30, and if your right hand calls you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you, for it is more profitable for you, to, for you that one of your member perishes than for your whole body to be cast into hell. Amen? This is a scary thing he's saying right now. This is how serious sin is. Right? And then Matthew 10, 28, he says this, Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. But rather fear God, who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Amen. So who says that God doesn't send people to hell? Huh? Who says that? Who says that? He talks about hell, chapter 11, chapter 18, 23. It goes on and on and on. Christ was a hell-bound preacher. Because, we, because when you talk about salvation, the word hell must come into play. Because we're talking about rescue, deliverance, salvation. From what? From your loneliness? From your anxiety attacks? From your depression? Yeah, that comes with it. But what's the essence of your deliverance? He rescued you from pit of hell. Until you get that through your head, you will never love God the way you should. Your love for God will be always shallow if it's, if it's real love. Shallow. Because you don't understand where you've been saved and delivered from. That's if you're saved and delivered. He's a hell-bound preacher because he's, he's telling you, you got to understand where I have rescued you from. And to be more specific, specific. precise, I say precise, <laughs> it is you, it's the love of God that saved you from his wrath. His wrath his love. His love saved you from his wrath. 
Same God. Same character. Amen? And in that sense, you cannot say God does not send unrepentant sinners to hell. Again, it's unrepentant sinners. He rejoices those who come home who repent. And comes, he rejoices. But the unrepent, they live under the wrath of God until they repent. When they repent, they just switch up. They're going to switch up to the grace of God. That's, that's the gift of God, right? You're living under the wrath of God all your life. The wrath is upon you. You're, you're, just, you're just it's accumulating, as Paul says in Romans 8, right? accumulating, right? But when you repent and come to Christ, it's all gone. You're forgiven. That's the grace of God. Through his blood, amen? And by his resurrection, Right? But when you reject the God incarnate, I want you to think about this. He's an alpha and omega. He's a great I am. He is the uncreated one. He's transcendent one. And this transcendent one, who's the second person of the Trinity, he emptied himself to come down as a man. God incarnate word became flesh. And lived a life that you lived, but did not sin. Without sin, went through puberty, everything, did not sin. Did not sin, right? Spotless lamb. And therefore, only he would satisfy the wrath of God. Amen. See, the wrath of God needed to be satisfied. Why? He's a God of justice. His love is perfect because he's a righteous judge. That's why his love is perfect. And his love is he's so righteous, someone had to pay the price for the sin. And he searched the whole earth. No one was satisfying to him because all sinners. He looked at his son. Son, would you do the honors? Yes, Father, I will. He who knew no sin became sin for us. You don't get any higher revelation than this. This is it right here. This is the gospel. I'll preach this to you every Sunday. Every Sunday. Make my job easier, right? <laughs> but if you reject this, oh, man, oh, we... If you reject this, oh, we, oui. you sit under the wrath of God who is angry against unrepentant sinners 24 7. God so loved the sinners. How much did he love the sinners? Romans 5 8. God demonstrated his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's how much he loves the unrepentant sinners because when we didn't even know him, when we were his enemies, he died for us. God incarnate, and you're going to reject this? You deserve his wrath. You deserve his wrath. Because you deserved it from the beginning anyways. You have no right from the beginning anyways, right? Right? But by his grace, he poured out his love for you, for the undeserved people. And you're going to reject that? These people are out of their mind. They are out of their mind. They don't know what they're going to run into. Foolishness. That's why Paul said, the cross is foolishness to those who are, to those who are perishing. But it is power to the ones who are being saved. It's called what? Sanctification. You're being saved. You are saved, therefore, you gotta be, now you got to be being saved now. It's called sanctification. Justification produces sanctification. If you're not being sanctified, you are never justified in the beginning.
Again, the arrogant, proud, haughty eyes who reject this wonderful gospel about this wonderful Savior will be thrown into hell because the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience, as it says in Ephesians 5, 6, right? That's the wire. That's why I should, I should use the hammock today. Right? Meaning in the end, in the end, it is God who sends the sinners to hell. You got that? You can you, 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 you word play all you want. No, it's the sin that drags us. It's the devil that, yeah, that's all true. It is all true. But who is sovereign over everything? God is. He's a sovereign one over everything that happens in your life. And if you don't, if you, if you reject the gospel, he'll just give you over to your sin and let you be. You know how scary that is? So receive it while he's knocking at your door. Amen. Receive it and repent and turn from your ways. And receive eternal salvation. He hates sinners, not sin. He hates the unrepented, arrogant, prideful sinners. That is why James, here comes New Testament. James 4, 6, God opposes the proud, right? He, you know what oppose means in Greek? It means militant force. It's to drive out. It's like waging war against the sinners. That's why we just read it, man, earlier. Psalm 714, he what? He sharpens his sword. He gets his arrow ready. To who? To kill, demolish the sinner. But then again, the Bible tells us this, that he waits for for them to repent. He waits for them. You know that? He gives them chance after chance opportunities after opportunities. Because somebody in, your, in their family is a Christian, someone among their friend is a Christian, someone around them is a Christian, and some of you come to church every Sunday to hear me, to hear me preach. This real gospel according to who? Jesus Christ. This is the gospel. I'm confident in my faith that what I preach up here is the real gospel. It's the real gospel. God is my witness. He's looking at me right now with his fiery eyes, looking dead into my heart right now. I can feel it. I stand before this God and I preach to you his word, the truth. But he waits for the sinners. Gives them chance after chance. Look at this. Peter 2 Peter 3.9, for the Lord is not slack, meaning he's not slow concerning his promises. I mean, just because he's not coming now, don't think he's slow. As some count slowness, but he's long-suffering towards us. He will not, not willing that anyone should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Why? Because 1 Timothy 2.4 says this, God desires all men to be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. This is the heart of God, which is he wants all men to be saved. So he waits for the unrepentant, he waits for the unrepentant sinners to repent. He waits for them until however time they are left on this earth. But we don't know how much, we don't know how, how much time that is. That's what God says to you. Today is your day of your salvation. Today, repent. Turn from your ways. Repent. Turn from your ways. You might just walk out and just drop dead. Or he might just return any time. So repent and choose this day to be saved. But there are so many unredeemed. The unredeemed do not hear this voice because they reject the gospel. And some Calvinist comes along to me and says, hey, that's because he wasn't predestined. That's what they're telling me. As if like, you don't got to pray for anymore. Just give up because it's been six years, right? How many? Seven, Paul? Seven, yeah, okay. He was, he's not predestined. He was, he's, not, he's not elect. They say that I, it's my, it's, my, it's my real experience. 
See, that, this, this doctrine of predestination is another, another thing I, I, I got I to go up against because of this kind of attitude right here. Right? But I say we're all predestined to be saved. We're all elected to be saved. God doesn't pick and choose, man. If that's the case, why are you going to go out to evangelize? Why are you praying for the lost? Huh? We just read it. Peter 3 9. He doesn't want no one to come to, he wants no one to perish. He wants all to come to repentance because he desires all men to be saved. Because God so loved the world. Amen? Right? But because of their arrogance and pride of life and the lust of the flesh and their haughty eyes, they reject the gospel and they remain under the wrath of God. They are unredeemed who are, are ignorant to the knowledge of God, as Paul says, Ephesians 4, 18, 19, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the arrogance that is in, in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who, who being past feelings have given themselves over to lewdness, to walk, to work all in uncleanness with, with, greed, greed, with greedness. Amen? Wow. The blindness of the heart is what produces this ignorance, unbelief. And Paul says about himself in 1 Timothy 1.13, he says, Although I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and an insolent man, but I obtained mercy because I did what? Ignorantly in unbelief, right? So ignorance is simply just unbelief. That is the bondage of sin right there. Unbelief is, is where every sin starts right there, unbelief. Why? Because they're prideful, they're arrogant. No, I'm not. I'm, yes, you are. You're arrogant. You're the most arrogant person in the world. No, I'm a nice guy. I, I, I do good things. No, no, no. You're arrogant. You're a prideful man. Because you can't receive free gift. You can't receive his grace. But you can be free from this arrogant, ignorant, unbelief. When people are coming at you with the gospel again and again and again. Beloved, but it has to be the real gospel though. It's got to be the real gospel. The Holy Spirit operates in the truth, not in lies and fake. Do you know how many people receive the gospel, these, these touching heart gospel, motivational speaking gospels, they receive it, the hearts warm, they even cry, they repent. But the, the, seed, the, the, the seed gets snatched away. It doesn't get planted. It doesn't produce any fruit. That was not the real gospel. It was just a motivational speech of touching your heart. See, we all got feelings, right? These motivational speakers, they know how to touch your heart, man. Trust me. They're, 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 they, know, they know how to touch your heart, man. They're motivational speakers. They're trained for this on the pulpit. They try to motivate you rather than to convict you. So if you have friends and family members that heard the gospel, I mean real gospel, not one of these watered down humanistic motivational speech gospel, but a real gospel, According to Jesus Christ, interpreting the four gospels just as he said. Not one of these. I know this is what he said, but this is what he means. Not, not one of those. Real raw gospel. When you hear the real gospel again and again and again, I believe with all of my heart, beloved, the gospel cannot, there's, there's nothing that gospel cannot tear down. Okay. Your arrogance, your pride is bound to fall. Okay. It took my dad years and years and years and years. At the age of 65, he became the most faithful Christian. In 94, he died. Right? Changed man. He would never receive the gospel. 
He would mock God all day, every day in front of my mom. Man, but when that gospel just kept coming at him, man. Bam, bam, sword, hammer, just coming at him. And to his son, going to prison, back in and out, in and out. Getting shot, stabbed. His son's always getting doped out, getting doped out, getting sucked up, you know. He sees his son just going through all this stuff, right? And he sees his other son got paralyzed from waist down. He just got weak. His pride just crumbled. He said, God created a situation. Here I am, getting locked up, doped out, guns, drugs, whatever, gangs, mother, brother, handicapped from waist down. And when he was 19, he woke up one day, couldn't walk anymore. Right? He said, man. He just, Lord. He cried out to the Lord, man. My mother has been contending for his salvation. His parents were contending for his salvation. His sister was contending for his salvation. Prayer of the saints. So if you have somebody who's not a believer, make sure they first listen to the real gospel. Real gospel. And then pray for them. And I believe with all my heart, they will believe. They will repent. And they will turn. Amen? Amen. And their souls will be saved. And that is exactly what it comes down to. Souls being saved. Doesn't matter how meaningful, how successful you might live on this earth, because if you're not a truly in Christ, then everything you do is all in, is pointless, is aimless. Don't matter how successful you are. Look at this. In our verse, verse 18, let's go to verse 18 in our passage. Knowing that you were not redeemed with, in, with corruptible things like silver and gold from your aimless conduct. Received from the tradition of a father. He's talking to the Jews right now. Okay? The Pharisees, your fathers, meaning your futile ways, which means that is life that is aimless, pointless, useless, because whatever you did on this earth, no matter how meaningful, how successful it might have, it might have looked to the eyes of people, but in the eyes of God, it's all, in vain. it's all in vain if you're not in Christ. All in vain. That is why Jesus says in Mark 8.36, for what would it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Do you believe what this means right here? If you're here today, if you're not a believer, you gotta just consider this. Your life here on this earth is about a vapor in the wind. Like this, it's gone. Because you are an eternal being. Whether in hell or heaven, you're an eternal being. Which one do you want to be in? You being here today, this is the grace, this is the sovereign grace of God. It's God's providence that you're here today. Listen to this message. Do not reject this. And those of you who are already saved that receive this message, be careful what you do with this message. But this ain't no watered down, sugar coated gospel here. You just receive the real word of the Lord. Amen? Meaning, even if your ministry, your ministry, as in doing God's work, might have looked so successful and meaningful to the eyes of men, but if it was not truly done in Christ and for Christ, then it's all in vain, right? You see, in Matthew 7, people have done mighty, mighty things in the name of Jesus Christ, but Christ says, I never knew you, you evildoers, right? Meaning, whatever they did, they didn't, they, didn't, they, didn't, they didn't do it for the Lord because they were never saved to begin with. They were never saved. They were never saved. They were like that guy, man, book of Acts, man, that sorcerer, wanted Paul's power. Give me that power, man. Give me that power. Can, can, can I have that power too? They're like Judas, hanging around Jesus, but never willing, willing, 
were in Jesus, just hanging around in Jesus. You just, you just dancing around Jesus, dancing around Jesus all day, all your life, hanging around Jesus, but you never ever got to know Him. Is that you? Is that you? I believe that these, those false prophets, I believe, I believe, I could be, I'm just my personal take, I believe they're the ones that preach that God's love is unconditional. And God doesn't hate the sin, only hates the sinners. God is angry at those two phrases. Because that takes people straight to hell. God does not take pleasure of sending people to hell. He waits for them. He waits for them to repent. He sent his son for you, man. So why would he take pleasure in sending you to hell? Even though that's his wrath. Because he's a just God, man. That's why he has, he has wrath. Because he's, he's, he's so just, he has wrath against sin. If he didn't, he wouldn't be, he wouldn't be a righteous judge. Beloved, understand God in a biblical perspective. Not one of this humanistic preaching that you grew up with in your home church. Going back to verse 18, Peter says, From your aimless conduct received by tradition of your father. See, tradition, tradition that comes from certain cultures can be very evil in the eyes of God, right? Not all tradition is bad. Not all culture is bad. But beloved, if you cannot break out of your culture and your tradition for the sake of Christ, then that tradition and that culture is evil. You got it? I'm Korean. I got Korean blood running all over me. Even though I grew up in America, I'm, I'm Korean, right? Went to, I, grew up in a Korean, I grew up in America since, until I was 28 years old. Now, right now, I'm 53. But I've been here longer than now, now. I'm very Koreanized now, right? But I, all my younger years grew up in America, grew up in the 80s and 90s, right? But even though we immigrated to America, that tradition never left us, right? Because my, my dad wasn't a believer, so we did Cheza, ancestral worship. And beloved, there's Christians in the church right now, as I speak, think that it's okay. Preachers say it's okay. Because you know why? You don't want to disrupt the family. Cheza is so important in Korean culture and tradition. Oh, you don't want to go against that, man. That's like a Muslim saying, I don't want to be a Muslim anymore. Disgrace the whole family, right? Same thing. So the Korean pastors, they just, it's okay. 15 years, 10, 12 years ago, I preached this against Cheza one day. Man, Kwanza Nimis can't mad me. Can't mad me. You think that Cheza is okay? You're worshiping demons. You don't worship dead people. But they compromise. No, it's okay. I, I got to evangelize to my, to my uh, family members. So I gotta, I'm going to participate in the Cheza to win his heart. I'm gonna, no, no, no. But love it. That's just like you saying that there is called missionary dating. Yay. Same thing. You that are dating, dating non-believers thinking you can bring them to Christ, you are deluded. Amen. You're living in a fantasy world. That happens maybe like 1% of chance out of 100. Okay, okay, okay. 2%. Because I've seen it happen. Okay, okay, 3%. That's it. I stop right there. No more. Because I've seen it happen. But 3%? Come on. 3% out of 100? 3%? You going to take that chance? You going to take that chance? No. Come on now. Come on now. But my mother war against the Cheza every year. Hey. And through her prayer, by God's grace, when my father became a Christian, we stopped doing this. Right? Yeah. 
Again, he came to Christ when he was 65, and he died at 94. He died from COVID at the age of 94, right? My point is there are people in the church who take part in, in this ancestral chesa worship to bring for the peace in the, in the family, and they think that God understands. They think that God understands. He doesn't understand because, as I said last Sunday, you know, that worshiping Caesar, right? That day will come again. You're going to have a choice. You're going to worship this antichrist, this beast, or take the mark of the beast, or you're going to deny the mark, not worship him, and get beheaded, get persecuted, get thrown out. What are you going to do? That day is going to come. If we don't get taken up before the tribulation, I hope we do get taken up, but if, if the church got to go through tribulation, beloved, I believe with not all of my heart, but most of my heart, that your generation, we're going to go through that tribulation. That's if we don't get taken up before, before the tribulation. I don't know where I stand. Before I, before I used to be post-trib, but now, man, I, I, I humble myself, man. I think pre-trib makes sense too in the Bible. I got four scriptures that clearly speak to me. It's pre-tribulation. But then again, there's, there's ten that says it's not. Right? But four is good enough for me. For me, for me to stay in the middle. I don't know. But, but I can always say, man, I'd rather, get, I'd rather be ready for tribulation and then get taken up. Oh, yeah, wow. Then not be ready and, and let, let the wave come at you, right? So I want to preach like this. You're going to go through the tribulation. When you do, when you, when you do, when you do, when you do, persecution comes from the Antichrist army and his campaign. Right? Martial law in America, the UN, beloved, I'm telling you right now, it's rising up. It's rising up, man. This COVID vaccine, it was just a, it was just a um, preview of it right there. What happened? They all just took the, took the vaccine. I'm not saying, that, I'm not saying that's, that's a mark of the beast. That's not what I'm saying. But it's a shadow of things to come. That's the way that this government makes you ready for it. They just they, they just taste they just tasting the water right now. They're gonna come at you. You don't take this mark, man. You're not gonna be able to buy, sell, nothing. You're gonna starve to death. What you gonna do? And, and on top of that, we're gonna kill you. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? You gotta get ready. Amen. Amen. Nobody talks about this in the church. Why is that? Wow, that is, that really, really bugs me. They're preachers. They stand before the pulpit and they don't preach the whole truth. What are they thinking? I don't understand them. I fear for the, for the salvation, man. Right? Deceptive. I'm going to close from, you know, I'm just, I'm just going to close from, like, I got like another page, but I'm going to close it. I went, I went too far. Deception, beloved, I'll take it out. In my book, Passion for the Truth and Hate Against Lies and Sin is never easy going. It's never relaxed. It's never laid back. It needs to be fierce. 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 When some new, newcomer Visitor comes into the church and says, oh, God's love is unconditional. You sell all this, you got to correct them right there. Gently. Hey, what do you mean by that? Let me, let me explain to you what that means. You mean to say God's love is undeserved, right? you got to correct them. Do you understand? At least in this house, truth got to go forth. Amen. Anybody comes into this house, they got to hear the whole truth, but nothing but the truth. Amen? To help you, God. Amen? Right? And we want to be a people who are passionate for the truth. Because lies and deception is of the devil. Of the devil. Amen? Are you sons of disobedience or are you a child of God? Which one are you? Okay. Then you stand in the truth. And you become fierce as I am fierce. You don't have to be like me, but just in your heart, you got to be fierce. Fierce. Amen? You got to get angry against the lies and deception. You got to be angry against lies and deception. You got to be angry against sin. You got to hate sin. 
Even when you're sinning, you're gonna, still going to hate it. That's why those who have the Holy Spirit, who are living in sin, they can't enjoy it. They can't enjoy it. They're miserable. That's why they, don't, that's why they, they end up turning back to the Lord. But if a person is enjoying it all day, every day, living it up, he's not even saved. You're going to hate sin and love the truth. Amen? You're going to hate the lies and love the truth. Amen? Let's pray, church. Man, I got like three more pages, man. Oh, my goodness. Maybe I'll do this next week. Let's just pray. Give it three minutes, and I'll just close it, all right? Beloved, I want you to just, just, you know, just, just think on this. Just think about what I just preached. Because what I just preached, beloved, this is the word of the Lord. Amen? I'm not saying this out of boastful arrogance. I'm just saying, as God is my witness, I preach the gospel here. Beloved, this is the real gospel according to Jesus Christ. Amen? If you receive it, you're, you're a blessed people. You're, you're, you're the blessed one. You're, the, you're blessed, man. Now, what are you going to do with this now? What are you going to do with this, with this truth that you just heard? You're going to hate sin. You're going to war against it. You're going to war against lies and deception. And you're going to stand in the truth. No matter what the people around you say, they tell me all the time, Paul, relax. Relax, man. You're too much. I'm not a, I'm not a freak to them. I'm, I'm, a, I'm among the pastors. I'm among the pastors. I'm a freak. I'm an outcast. It's, I, I, I've always been this way since the beginning of my ministry. I walked a lonely road, man, for 17 years. And still nobody's with me. Except for you guys, right? Are you, are you with me? I walked a lonely road, man. I'm not just saying this to, 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 get, to focus on myself. I'm just, I'm just sharing my testimony right now, man. But I didn't waver. I, I, I felt the pressure to keep, to keep the people happy my preaching. I felt the pressure, right? I, I even prepared a sermon to keep people happy. When I stand up here, I don't know what happens to me. Fire of God just comes upon me, man. I just start preaching the truth, man. I just start unleashing. I start unleashing the truth. It's like unleashing the truth. I, I, I don't know what comes over me. When I come out of the pulpit, I'm a very gentle, nice guy. Oh, are you in sin? Let me pray for you. You know? When, when I'm up here, man, I don't know, bro. It just comes. We have to stand in the truth. The, the time is coming. In the church, people are going to, they're going to they're gonna pressure you. You talk like me, you preach like me, they're going to they're gonna make fun of you, they're going to pressure you, man. Go to any church right now and, and hey, yeah, come on now, come on now. You know what's up, you know what I'm talking about, right? Stand in the truth. No matter what the current is, you stand in the truth. You go against the current. You go against the grain. Amen? Amen? Let's pray for this boldness. If you've been convicted by this, repent and pray for this boldness. Amen? Let's pray, church. Let's pray. Yes, Lord Jesus. 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 Holy Spirit, come. Let us examine our hearts right now, Holy Spirit. Bring us into deep repentance of compromise, of compromise and of complacency. Of this relaxed, lazy spirit. We repent right now. Repent. Awaken us. Awaken us, Lord Jesus. Awaken us to your truth. Let us stand firm in your truth. Let us not waver. Let us not waver. Let us not be pressured. Let us give us the boldness and the strength to go against the current, to go against the grain, Lord Jesus. Yes. Give us iron in our spirit. Give us iron in our spirit. We will not fall. We will not fall. Iron in our spirit, which is the word of God. Jesus. Yes. Jesus. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Jesus. 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 Yes, Lord. Holy Spirit, come. 
us. Holy Spirit, strengthen us. Strengthen us, Holy Spirit. Strengthen us, strengthen us. Fill us. Spirit of truth. You are the Spirit of truth. You are the Spirit of truth. Come and fill us with your truth right now. Fill us with your truth right now. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Fill us with your truth. Fill us with your truth, Lord Jesus. Yes. Yes, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit. Come like fire and fill us with your truth. Fill us with your truth. Jesus, passion for your name. Passion for your truth. Passion for your kingdom. Passion for souls. Jesus. Yes. Yes, Jesus. 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 Give us passion. Passion that is contagious. And give us obedience that is radical. Jesus. 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 Church, let's all stand up. Let's all stand, please. Let's just worship the Lord. Let's worship the Lord about one song. And then Steve will close for us. Just a little while longer and I see you. Just a little while longer and I know you. Just a little while longer and we'll be together. Just a little while longer and I see you. Just a little while longer and I know you. Just a little while longer and we'll be together. Just a little while longer and I see you Just a little while longer and I know you Just a little while longer and we'll be together Just a little while longer and I see you Just a little while longer and I know you Just a little while longer and we'll be together Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is a judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light 
so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. Heavenly Father, we ask for your boldness, for your whole truth to grip our hearts. May we not compromise the truth. May we not pick and choose which verses we want to abide by. May we give ourselves to the whole counsel of God. We want to know your love as it ought to be known. We want to love your righteousness as it ought to be known. We want to know your justice, mercy, grace, judgment as they ought to be known. Help us grow in the knowledge of God. We will not be partial in our knowledge of you. Let us feed on the truth, the word of God. And soften our hearts, Lord. Soften our hearts. Take the heart of stone and turn it into flesh. Jesus, you said, blessed are you who are not offended by me. God, we delight in your truth and help us rejoice in your truth. Help us, Holy Spirit, to abide in your truth, not to be compromised. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Oh, 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 oh,
Father God, we thank you that you are the giver of all good things, the giver of all perfect and good things, Lord, and that you gave your only son for us, Lord. We give these tithes and offerings to you. We thank you for what you have done for us. Take this money and further your kingdom with it. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Amen. Look to God. All the time. You guys are still full. Okay. All right. Wow. Did you guys enjoy the offering song? Yeah. Man. Yeah. When I saw Jin right here and Shine right here and Roa right here, I immediately saw the Trinity. <laughs> you know, God has no gender. We all know that. But the, we, we call Abba Father, right? Abba Father. And the Holy Spirit in Hebrew is Ruach HaKodesh. That's feminine noun. Holy Spirit in Hebrew has feminine noun. Ruach HaKodesh. And a son, right? Trinity. It's a beautiful picture of God's family, and we are adopted into the family of God. Amen. Amen. And I like how Roa was holding on to the hand of, you know, uh, Roa as the Holy Spirit, you know, it, it was, was, you know, holding the son of Jesus. You know, it, it, Roa depended on her mom, right? Jesus depended on the Holy Spirit. And uh, it just blessed me to to see the love of God manifest in the family of God. Amen? Amen. We are adopted in this kind of family that never fails. Amen. All right. How many guys uh, received the word of the Lord today with great joy? It was, it was, let's give it up to God. Let's give it up to God. Yeah. Because of Pastor Paul's great zeal and passion for the truth, he gets very exhilarated at times, right? He gets so passionate, excited, but we all get the message, right? 
Do not focus on his facial expression. Do not focus on his frowning. But just to get, get, just, just get the message and leave the rest of all up to God, right? So focus on the message. You don't have to be intimidated by his frownings and all that. He, he gets heated up to the point where he calls Jesus hell bound preacher when, when he meant to say hell fire preacher, right? <laughs> so he meant to say hell fire preacher when he said hell bound preacher. So I just wanted to clarify, right? Yeah, sinners are hell bound. Jesus was hell fire preacher, right? So, so yeah. every time he's heated up, you know, he, he uses hell bound instead of hell fire but but we all get the point right and i like how pastor paul said sin is not a sin unless we do it right and at the end of the day jesus he said don't be afraid of don't fear those who only kill your body but be afraid but but fear the one who kills your body and afterwards sends your soul to hell and so let's fear him Let's fear him for what he can do to an unrepentant heart. And I received today's message in light of God's love. In light of God's love. Pastor Paul did not deliver this message to threaten you, to frighten you. He delivered this message so that we may know from where we have been delivered. The eternal wrath and punishment of God, right? And so, um, let's take heed against humanism. You know, 666 is a number of man. Seven is a number of God. 666 is a number of human. And it eventually leads to humanism, humanistic understanding of who God is. And postmodernism had, has greatly contributed to diluting the truth of God's word. And, and we see the rise of Antichrist spirit, willy-nilly, everywhere, right? Let's let's stand firm in the truth, and let's depend on the Holy Spirit. He's a spirit of truth. He's going to lead us into all truth. Amen? Amen. So, Pastor Paul, we we so appreciate your firmness in the truth so that we will not compromise. At the end of the day, what does it say? God is love. God is love. This ought to mitigate the intensity of his message every week. Right? According to our church's DNA, it should have been like, God is angry with you. But we chose not to write that so that we will get the you know, full picture of God's attribute. Right? We don't want to be obs- observed by God's wrath. We want to be also, you know, observed by God's love. So God is love. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. There's a good mitigator. Mitigator right here. All right. So at this point, we want to welcome the visitors. We are so glad that you are here with us. So if you would please raise your hand. Raise your hand from where you are. We want to welcome you with a round of applause. Welcome to Saving Grace today. We love you. We love you. We, are, we, are, we love you. So we just want to go around um, and, and start from here. Just, just say your name and where you're from, please. Nicholas? Oh, wow. And where are you from? Miku. Oh, Miku Saram. All right. Where in the States? North Carolina. Oh, wow. Woo, Hemin. Yeah. All right. And brother here. It's okay. Wow, welcome, welcome to Saving Grace. That's Nicholas and Mark. Mark, all right. And a sister, or brother all the way in the back. Sean, Jersey, all right. Welcome, welcome. Am I missing anybody? All right, sisters, yeah. From Germany. Oh wow! Welcome, welcome to Saving Grace. And over there, uh huh. From France. Welcome to Saving Grace. 
and a sister. Naomi from France. All right, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Anybody? Anybody? All right. Welcome to Saving Grace once again. Uh, I'd like to know whether you're uh, just visiting or do you, whether you live here. So please meet me in the kitchen, kitchen area. I'd like to talk to you. And uh, if you would, you know, you can stay for a, a small group. We have a cell group gatherings. So please get into a smaller group and get to know our people better. And, uh, and head out for dinner afterwards. All right, welcome to Saving Grace. And as for the announcement, oh, before the, uh, before the announcement, I just want to share a quick testimony. So every Thursday and Sunday, we have, uh, we have men's ministry, men's ministry. And, and this Sunday also, to, which was today, we also gather uh, for the lunch. And a- after the lunch, we headed out uh, to uh, Pound Day Coffee, right? And we were just having our sharings based on Daniel chapter 3. And a lady, uh, I guess she looked like, right, like in her 50s, right, Andrew? Yeah, she was, I guess, overhearing all of our, t- all of our stories, right? She was, she was, she was, she was like, she was, she was sitting with her friend, and she was like hearing our conversation. And she, was, and she, she, she called out for Andrew and said, oh, are, are you guys church? And he said, oh, yeah, we're church. And she said, I have a son who's studying in the States, and he's coming to Korea soon. And uh, I've been looking for a church for him. So, so just like that, right? And uh, Daniel, where, where, where are you, Daniel? Yeah, he had a he had he had that name card, right? Of Saving Grace. He was carrying that around, you know. He, he was carrying that around, right? So he had had multiple multiple <laughs> name cards of Saving Grace on his uh, humble wallet. And uh, he was like, oh, just, so he, he gave it to that, uh, you know, aunt, right? So we, let's expect her son to come to Saving Grace, you know, during the break. And praise God. You know, just, just, there was a sheer sign of God's delight in our gathering, right? God just, you know, man, he just reaches out to a soul through our gathering. We don't have, to, we, we didn't even speak a word. We were, we were just gathered and talked about how we were blessed out of Daniel chapter 3. And we prayed and she saw that. And hey, I'd like to send your son to your church, right? And so God delights in the gathering of the saints. And uh, let's gather. Let's gather, right? Let's gather. Let's gather. All right. And uh, how, was, how was our first Torah class, Julie? Woo! Let's give it up. Let's give it up to God. How many, how many turn out? 20 people. Wow. Praise God. Wow. So who joined? Show of hands. Woo. How'd you guys like it? Amen. Amen. So look out for a uh, uh, Torah series. Uh, you know, we can, we, st- we, we, we can still sign up, right? We can still sign up. So if you haven't, uh, please go up to uh, Julie, and she will also give you the materials for, your, for you to, you know, Catch up, right? All right. Thank you, Julie, for heading it up. And this week, this Saturday, we will have Sarah's cell clean up. Sarah's cell. Show of hands if you're in Sarah's cell. Yeah, you are coming to the sanctuary 4 p.m. and clean the sanctuary. Amen? It's very, very important that you come and clean because that's how you take ownership of the house, right? Even if you don't clean your room, you got to clean this room, okay? All right. And this Friday, we had our, uh, one of our worship leaders, Sane, deliver a wonderful message to us. Ooh, wow. It was a message titled, Run the Race. Run the Race. Solid message based on 1 Corinthians 9, right? 1 Corinthians 9. And I like what uh, Bella said. Uh, in our, in our church watch, may we discipline ourselves daily to seek him in the word and prayer so that we will grow deeper in faith and intimacy with him. And Lou also put it, it is impossible to please God without faith. Amen. So it was a timely message for all of us. And we could all see he really invested himself 
in the passage of scripture, and we so appreciate it, Sam. And, and we keep it coming. This Friday, uh, we will have our also another uh, worship leader uh, named Hemin. <laughs> so look out for that. Can we get the title of your message? Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. All right. All right, so let's pray for her. <laughs> That she'll be, uh, she'll be a blessing to all of us. And uh, how blessing it is to really, you know, feed on God's word through, you know, every, every leader in the house, right? So, so don't take it for granted. Please make it on Friday. That's 8.45 until 10.50. And every Saturday we have Saturday night prayer, SMP, from 7 to 9 p.m. We pray for the nations. And yesterday we had Pastor June. And Julie prayed for the churches in South Korea. And we had Bella and Lou pray against uh, uh, human trafficking. And we had AJ and Eric pray for the expats. All right. And this Saturday, we're going to pray for arts and entertainment and Israel. Okay. So if you want to pray, uh, then don't wait for, you know, Elder John Mark to reach out to you on Kakao. You can just send him a message. Hey, I've got to pray this Saturday. <laughs> I've got to pray this Saturday, okay? All right. And uh, Saving Grace Bible Proclamation, we are on Proverbs chapter 15, right? Proverbs, did you guys enjoy Proverbs chapter 14 all throughout the week? And so this week, we'll be on Proverbs 15. And as for the daily reading, we're on Isaiah 24 and 25. Isaiah 24 and 25. Okay, so let's put it up. Let's proclaim first five verses together. One, two, three. Turns away wrath, but the heart's word stirs up anger. The tongue of the wise commands knowledge, but the mouth of fools pour out folly. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. A gentle tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness is spirit. A fool despises his father's instruction, but whoever he is reproof is prudent. Amen. And uh, last but not least, we have a communal birthday cake. So if your birthday is in the month of April, please come to the front, everybody. All right. If you are April birthday. Come on, everybody. Don't be shy. Come on. If your birthday is in the month of April, come. Woohoo! Come, everybody. All right. All right. Wow, we have, we have plenty. All right. So let's bless them as you sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, da -da 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 -da. happy birthday to you. Woo! All right, everybody, everybody, circle, hold around. Johnny, where's Johnny? Johnny, all right, come. All right, all right, one, two, three. All right, congratulations, guys. Happy birthday to you. So please enjoy the cake. Man, I, I just forgot my, my, my son's birthday. <laughs> I, I just blacked out. <laughs> All right, praise God. Hey, so uh, I have an announcement to make. <clears throat> hey, are we, can we go off the air, please?